Okay. This is from All in a Pretty Little Row by Roadside Press. Um, the list of old chat books that I published from the mid nineties till a couple of years ago. Um, so written in during times of uh, strife and all other fun crap. So this one comes from the chat book, Born to Look on the Ground. That was published by my good friend, Michael Grover. And the first poem is called A Way of Life. <clears throat> Depression sucks. It's a murderer of many, the pain of existence, a lasting relationship with the knowledge that death is around the corner. That unwanted thing you never want to talk about, the cheap lady in the goth clothes, your nightmare at noon, your insomnia at 4 a.m. This is what depression is, alcoholism, flimsy drunk addicts, spouse abuse, jobless, homeless, a shot in the, a shot in the heart from Ted Daily Demons. Depression? Yes, I have it. For too many years, too many days locked up in black and blank, slurping through life on a bug infested couch, watching Law and Order re reruns, crying to the shadows of dust, arranging clothes on the floor, spare change on the table, magazines from last year on the desk, CDs out of jackets, lost, forlorn, disgusted, angry, looking for one more drink to get past the plunge, avoiding mirrors, showering in dirty water, smell, grime, a filthy sink, analysis of spoon-fed steps to the mailbox. Yes, this is fucking depression. A shrill in the daytime that no one hears, but you and only you. For it's our little secret, all those who walk like prisoners without the key, bombarded with soot, from a hole in your stomach, silent yet loud, pounding your head until your ears bleed into the river of ponder, too tired to hear and see. A long time with yourself is never scripted, only feared when the phone is the enemy and the food on the table has gone bad. Friends with fruit flies that comfort the pain, normalcy inside a spit cup, phlegm is just an inconvenience you cough up when there is no answer out the window. Plagues of ships sail in no harbor, but inside your mind. Pirates cutting your throat with memories of being beat up by the great school bully, spitting sunflower seeds in your hair. And you, supposedly tough guy, do nothing but cry in the corner where they know, they know. Cruise on whiskey highs, marijuana highs, like the beam for a while until the come down, leading to a vial of pussy tears and dancing in a false pavilion. Sickness can take the mind where the mind usually does not want to go. But we travel there. Oh, yes, we travel there. Until the sea and the sand and the wind and the trees and the heartache of missing her touch becomes passe and almost a basic ritual to feed the crow again. Man walks by. And you don't care. Fuck, why do you care? Are you a savior in the stream? Slammed on a cross or crashed in a building? My spirit could never fly. Not while my trash can is full. The men die daily. They always do. My actions mean nothing in the spirit of things. Things that matter, then don't. But that's another argument. Is this life a choice of the living? or the roll of a dice by some goop of a being that enjoys seeing us suffer. A Massachusetts wizard or God? I don't know. I never know. So I wake up again, contemplating the knife or the pills or the building in downtown Worcester that's high enough to jump off and kill me. Then choose neither. Instead, I shower and put on a suit of existence. Refuse to listen to music. Drive toward fake, drown in my own tears, then repeat the process the next day. Yes, this is depression, my friend or enemy, a medal of the mind, a shotgun to the soul, while my contemporaries can turn away in agony, thanking their lucky stars, it's not them. Thank you.
This one's called co-ed with one arm. Beautiful girl with one arm walking across campus. She approaches the chapel and genuflex. I wonder if she can, is thanking the Lord for the day or cursing him because of the cruel joke he played on her. She adjusts her sunglasses, does the sign of the cross, and strolls away with a smile on her face. Somewhere, someone must be listening. Thank you. Okay, this is from the chat book. Um, oh, still born to look on the ground, sorry. World widows. She dreamt of armies, men who fought and bled, different names, different guises, all tired from strife, throughout the century of victories and defeats. Body counts told to grieving widows whose lovers were sold a bill of goods by entrapped loyalty, their men purged so ravenously into their soul. The woman cried, present and past, Roman widows, English widows, world widows. We are born to suffer, not wander, as the famous song once said. Drifting into slumber, she knows that one will not come home, ever. Thank you. Okay, this one was, this one's called, chapbook was called On a Wagon on a Binge. And this also was published by a good friend of mine, Steve Goldberg. Off the wagon. Servitude to the liquor. Cloudy Friday, 1.15 p.m. Blonde hungover bartender. Another day at the races. Where to, boy? The sun is far, far away from this place. And here we are frozen in deep thoughts among ourselves. Did Berryman think this way? Dead and dim, lit shadows, a glitzy Blackmore solo breaks from the jukebox, scares us all into remembering that we are here for a purpose, but no purpose exists. Thanks. Okay. This is from the chat book. Um, how, I, how am I doing on time, Michelle? Michelle. You're good. Hello? You're good. She drops, oh, my, she drops what, out a lot. I've been dropping out. You are not. You're good. Can you hear me still? Okay. I'll read a couple more. Poets block number 237. Where am I supposed to be? Just plain average, not content, but not stupid. Adorned with some echo of talent, but a reverse life. Anguish and heart, sympathy and guilt. A story that just will not come to fruition. With pangs of anger. I drop now, leave the word, because I have nothing else to say. Nothing else to feel. I am nowhere near my destination. Only have it driven to melt away. Seeking signs to come back, back to absolutely nothing. I see the apparatus across the tiny room and I am fearful of what it will do to me. Where do you go when the lost is found? Thank you. Okay, I got a couple more and then I will leave you. Um, not leave you, but just stop reading. Uh, this was called um, from a chapter called The Green Room which was a um, chapter 766 uh, DYS facility. And I worked in the place called the green room. And a lot of times I had to get kids out of rooms and do physical restraints. So it was, uh, it was a tough job. So I've written, uh, I read a chapter about that. So, um, so one of them is called send me to hell on earth. I'm already ahead of you. Constant witnessing of pent up anger. A young boy was subjected to having feces thrown at him while hiding in a closet part of some cult's initiation process. How many times did this kid face terror? How many times has he feared? Little Jimmy would flip out in class, growling, snarling, throwing erases, chalk, anything he could get his hands on. Teachers would run to me for assistance. He is ruining my classroom. They would pant and drool, begging me to remove him, which I knew was my job. 
as I picked up little Jimmy like an unwanted wounded angel, carrying him to the green room where he would try to bite, scratch, and kick me like I was a boxing body bag. He would soon wear himself out, understanding that his realities would not go away by trying to fight me, accepting truth, but not knowing how to phrase his sorrows. He would begin to cry, uncontrollable tears and screams in a cold isolation room, where it would be just him and me. He would try to speak, but only two words were ever uttered. I'm pissed. Yeah, Jimmy, I know, would be my response. I held and rocked him like baby Jesus, let him weep himself to sleep. I would let him lie, take a deep breath, then wait. Hoping the next episode, the next confrontation would not be, conf yeah, confrontation would not be so taxing. But that was a lie I kept telling myself. There were no physical or emotional breaks. In this world of real vil villains who beat and degrade youngsters and dare to call themselves human beings. Thank you. Um, one more. I just got one more. I can find it here. Okay, I'll read this one. Queen. When she was a new goddess, laughing at introspective pony boys who saw gold and shined sunsets, screams from the precipice became torrents of rain. A mountain would topple. A man would cry. She became the power of lust, unabridged, unbridled. No story to be told or butts and buttons to push. Only longing stares and murmurs from men. Beast and idea, lads in performance. Her kind never fades away. Just takes time to acknowledge the hunger. Feed, smile, leave. Thank you so much. And again, I apologize for all the computer glitches that are going on. Um, again, the book's called All in a Pretty Little Row. It's the second one that Michelle published. Uh, for me, and she does an absolutely fantastic job, and um, it's re very, very appreciated. It really, really is. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.